In the previous lectures, we found certain similarities between equality and congruency. They, in fact, are very similar. They share the three properties of equivalence relation. That is, let me write them one more time. Both of them are reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And then we also found that you can add, subtract, multiply, by the same constant on both sides. So these are the four properties that we have already discussed in the previous lectures. If you have not seen them, I advise you to go ahead and see them first before looking into this particular video. <clears throat> now, there are interesting relationships between equations. Two equations can be added, subtracted, or multiplied. So if A is equal to B, C is equal to D, we are very comfortable in adding the equations. So we say that A plus C is equals to B plus D. We are also comfortable in subtracting the equa equations. So A minus C is equal to B minus D. And we are also very comfortable in multiplying the equations. AC is equals to BD. Now will that work? Will these things work when we work with congruency? That is, if A is congruent to DB modulo M, C is congruent to D modulo M, can we say is number one, a plus C congruent to B plus D mod M. Always remember that the scale is same. We cannot change the scale. So A, is A plus C congruent to B plus D? Is A minus C congruent to B minus D mod M? And finally, is AC congruent to BD? modulo m. Now these proofs are kind of similar. We will use a very well-known technique that we have already used a couple of times in the previous lectures. See, all of these are actually true. You can add, subtract, or multiply congruences. These are true. Now how can we show this? Well, the technique is this, that if A is congruent to B mod M, this means that A minus B is divisible by M, which means that A minus B is equals to M times some number. Let's call it M times Q1. Similarly, C minus D is equals to some M times Q2, because C is congruent to D mod M. These are the two things that are given to us. Now, let's add these two equations. If we add them, we have A plus C minus B minus D is equals to M times Q1 plus Q2. Now, this implies A plus C minus B plus D is equals to M times Q1 plus Q2. Now see, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the difference of A plus C and B plus D to be divisible by M. That's, a, that's what we need. We want the difference of these two numbers, A plus C and B plus D, to be divisible by M. And that's exactly what we have got. A plus C minus B plus D equals to M times something. So clearly, this means... 
a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod m. Okay, now let's let's look at it from a different point, point of view. Now, what if we subtracted the two equations? If we subtracted the two equations, we would have gotten, okay, let's do it in a different whiteboard. So, we start off with a minus b is equals to mq1 and c minus d equals to mq2. Now if we subtract the two equations we have a minus b minus c minus d equals to mq1 minus mq2. So this means a minus b minus c plus d is equals to mq1 minus mq2 which further implies if we group it properly a minus c minus b minus d is equal to m times q1 minus q2 so this implies a minus c is congruent to b minus d modulo m. These proofs are pretty dry but they would actually help you to use the same technique over and over again and if you use the same technique over and over again that becomes a weapon for you in subsequent problem solving. Uh, in each of these problems we are converting this congruence in relation into this uh, bare product and subtraction relation that if a is congruent to b then their difference is some multiple of this scale m and then we are manipulating it in a regular manner so we wanted to show that a, is, a minus c is congruent to b minus d so we sort of showed that their difference is divisible by m exactly what we needed the final piece is that we need a c is congruent to bd mod, mod m and that's kind of simple as well what we do is we we know that a minus b is equals to mq1 we just restructure it as a is equals to b plus mq1 now after seeing up to this you should pause the lecture and try it yourself because really this can be done from here if not uh, let me give you a little bit more so c minus d is equals to mq2 of course which means c can be written as d plus mq2 and now you can multiply both of them both of the equations because you can multiply equations you know that so ac is equals to b plus mq1 times d plus mq2 so we get bd plus mbq2 plus mdq1 plus m square q1 q2 so we have ac is equals to bd time plus m times bq2 dq1 m q1 q2 Finally, this tells us that AC minus BD let, let's scroll down a little bit AC minus BD is equal to M times BQ2 DQ1 q1 q2 so ac minus bd is divisible by m exactly what we wanted because that means that ac is congruent to bd modulo m so as long as the scale is same as long as the scale is same you can add two congruences you can subtract two congruences 
and you can multiply two congruences just like you would do with equations. I think up to now the discussion tells us that really the symbol of equality and congruence are not coincidentally similar. They have so many similar properties. I mean they both are reflexive, both are symmetric, both are transitive. You can add, subtract or multiply by constants on both sides of both of these things and similarly you can add, subtract or multiply two linear, two congruences just as you would do with equations. Makes sense that these two symbols look so similar. In fact, using this last, last property, we can also prove a very curious and useful uh, property of congruences, which is true for equality anyway. That is, if a is equal to b, you can say a to the power k is equal a is equals to b to the power k. So if a is congruent to b modulo m, can you raise both sides to the same power, just as you did with equality? Of course you can. The technique is this, that write down the same equation, the same congruence again. Now use this property that we just proved, that is, if we have a congruent to b, c congruent to d, modulo the same scale, then we can multiply the congruence. That is, AC is, AC is congruent to BD. We use that here. So, A is, equal, is congruent to B mod M, A is congruent to B mod M. These are my two congruences. So, we can multiply these two. So, A square is congruent to B square mod M. Now, you can understand what we would do next. We would again write A is congruent to B mod M below this and operate these two in the exact same way as we did earlier. Then we would get a cube is congruent to b cube mod m. And we will keep on doing it k times, get a giving us a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo m. You do understand that this gives us a very powerful similarity between equality and congruency. That is, we can raise both sides of the congruency to the same power, just as we would do with equality. With this many similarities between equality and congruency, you might actually think that are there any differences at all between these two operations, these two relationships? Of course, there is one. I will give you the difference, uh, differentiating property. Uh, you have to prove it as an exercise. So if A is equals to B, we can divide both of these by the same number C, as long as C is not zero, of course. The division must make sense. So A divided by C is also equal to B divided by C. In plenty of cases, this will not work for congruency. That is, if A is congruent to B mod M, this might not mean that A by C is congruent to B by C mod M. This may not work. As an exercise, can you construct some examples where this does not work and some example where this does? And can you guess why it does not when it does not and why it does when it does? The theory of congruence leads to plenty of interesting problems which we typically discuss in, um, in classrooms. Theoretically, it leads to some of the interesting theorems of elementary number theory, like Fermat's theorem, Wilson's theorem, and so on. Of course, they can be proved without using congruence theory, but they are very efficiently proved using congruence theory. So, we would probably do that. 
See you in the next lecture. Thank you.